Uh, as we turn to the UFC women's flyweight title fight, current champion Valente Valentina Shevchenko aims to make yet another defense of her title and look to extend her eight-fight win streak as she takes on Dana White contender series veteran and number four ranked Talia Santos, who earned her first title shot after a four-fight win streak. Um, Talia, I'm glad you're here. I know you were having some technical issues. So we're going to jump right in with questions. Mike Bond from MMA Junkie, you are first. Hey, can you hear me? Here we go. Do we have Valentina here too, Megan? I just, I couldn't hear the intro. Yes, Valentina and Talia are both here for you. There was not any difficulties because I kept myself active in training and keep me improving as always. And uh, especially I was visited my hometown, my home country. And we, it, this was uh, very exciting for me because it's kind of like, uh, going back to visit my family, my friends, the place where I grew up is a place what bring me like so much energy mm -hmm. for the upcoming fight. That's why mm -hmm. I feel very recharged, very like um, completely uh, with this desire to fight and show myself the skills and everything. And I'm curious, since the last time we oh. saw you fight, we've seen both Amanda Nunes and Rose Namajunas lose their titles. I'm curious of seeing that, you know, they were champions that were expected to defend their belts in those fights. Does that motivate you at all or make you more focused for your fight when you see that? No, not at all. I know what I have to do. I know what I have to do to win the fight and show the best of me, my best performance. And this is like uh, mm, I was showing every single my fight. So there is no other. I know what to do to stay motivated all the time. And I'm just curious, lastly, what you think of uh, Talia as an opponent. Obviously, you fought a lot of different styles at this point, but she comes in with a, a very impressive, nice record. Um, what do you think she brings to the table in this fight? I think that she is very strong fighter. She has like uh, a lot of physical like power and everything. And um, another thing, like being uh, fighting for the title, it requires um, like to be the best um from the other girls what they are like behind her that's why as always i'm preparing my best my 100 person for every single defense what i have i take um so i respect all my fi uh, contenders all my opponents and this is make me like uh, mm, i think not underestimate their skills but also see their weak sides great thank you thank you Mosok from Mo Sport. That's who we're going to go with next. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering every name and pronunciation here. Looks like he's joined. If you want to unmute yourself, you should be able to speak. Hello, can you hear me? There we go. Yeah, no worries. Just Mosok was fine. Mosok from Mo Sport, Mo and Sports.com. Talia, what do you think is the key route for you to win this fight? Ayla, qual que você acha que é a chave para você vencer essa luta? É, então, é, eu creio que levar essa luta para o solo, né? A Valentina é uma atleta bem dura, tem uns pontos fortes na trocação. É, mas eu creio que na luta de solo eu vou conseguir me sobressair. Um, so, I think that taking this uh, fight to the ground is the key. I think Valentina is very strong, and her key strong points were in striking. And I, But I do think that if we take this down to ground, I can overcome her. And Valentina, I see you smiling. What was your response to that? Oh, you know, it's, um, it's the same response for all my other opponents someone was thinking they have better striking another one thinking that they have better wrestling but you know the octagon shows them that they are wrong and this is like most exciting part of the this like content this fight that uh, see frustration on someone's face when they understand they are not better but that's fine I'm not ha I'm not having any issues to fight on the ground stand up like wrestle, whatever, because being UFC champion, MMA champion, it requires a lot of skills, a lot of abilities. You cannot be just one sided fighter. And that's fine. That's good. I don't know if it's her tactic, like this is what she's really thinking to do, but whatever. I'm ready for anything. Perfect. Best of luck. Thank you.
Okay, next, I think we have Alfredo Bush from Claro Sports. Alfredo, if we unmute you, you should also make sure you unmute yourself and then we should be able to hear you. I think I am in mute. Do you hear me? Yep, perfect. Perfect, thank you very much. So for uh, Valentina, uh, do you still uh, have uh, this kind of, of have fun inside the octagon after all these uh, winning uh, you have in, in, in your record? and have fun inside the octagon you know my approach to the fighter life it's a little bit different than um i see like other uh, fighters having so i see <clears throat> i'm sorry <clears throat> i see a lot of fighters they are kind of like posting on their social media and like in interview mentioning that okay this is the uh, hard part is over now we're gonna have make fun like we have like making fun in the fight like the hard part is over this is like not not that, that harder but for me it's just like the preparation the hard part it's just a step toward your goal you still have to win the fight you don't have time for having fun yet the fun gonna be after your hands raised up this is my approach to the fight i never having fun during the fight and this is what i think make me um different because you don't have time to um like look for the crowd how big is the stadium how many person is there it's like action it's full action the job is not done yet once you are stepping into the octagon once you're stepping out with your belt this is a time to have fun uh, and once more uh, how do you keep uh, yourself humble when you receive all these uh, good adjectives and people talk good about you and your work and everything you have done how do you keep yourself hey I, i'm still here i still want to keep uh, winning the fights and be the best. Uh, so um, I, I think it's kind of like too different, like being humble and uh, stay motivated. It's kind of like to separate. I, I think the normal person, when someone saying good things about uh, the person, they like it's normal to stay humble. They have to feel grateful for that things that someone appreciate their job, what they was doing during like whole their career. So this is a normal, normal, normal people. They are reacting like that, that staying humble uh, when someone saying good things about them. But uh, if about motivation, what's keep me the same, like motivated as I was uh, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, it's my approach to the, my lifestyle, to my um, fight life, my fight philosophy. I'm not just a fighter who just having few years in a sport and then thinking about having as a career. I'm not that type of the fighter. I'm here because I'm martial artist. And this is my biggest motivation. My family, my coach, my sister, my mom, all people, all fans who supporting me for the fight. I just feel I cannot disappoint them. And the right right approach for the preparation for the fight and recover for the fight i think this balance between these two things it's keep me uh, well balanced between going to one extreme to other extreme i think so the um, exactly my approach to my lifestyle and my fight life perfect thank you very much thank you megan thank you up next i think we have mika frankel from the one 017 team. I'm so sorry. I feel like I'm just butchering all of your names and outlets, but please um, correct me when you jump on. Uh, we should be unmuting you and you should unmute yourself. Hi, it's Micah Frankel. And yes, it's 1017theteam.com. For Talia Santos, where do you think you're going to be able to find success in this matchup? Fala, onde você acha que você vai encontrar sucesso nessa luta? Quais pontos? Então, como eu disse, a Valentina é uma atleta dura, né? É, na trocação, venceu já várias oponentes é, duras também. Ela é uma atleta inteligente, mas eu creio que eu vou ter sucesso buscando a luta de solo, que é onde eu me sinto super bem. É, eu venho de uma escola de Muay Thai também, me sinto super bem na trocação mas uh, eu vejo os pontos fracos dela no solo. Então, eu creio que nessa área é onde eu vou, vou ter sucesso ali na, na luta. 
Um, well, as I said before, uh, Valentin is just a tough fighter, just one of the best and um, very experienced, very intelligent in her striking. And But I come from um, it, the the strength of, of being on the ground. I think, as I said before, taking this fight down to the ground would be the best thing for me because I do feel I have advantages. I also come from a school Muay Thai, so I can, I feel confident about uh, my striking, but I do think that the best strategy is actually take this fight to the ground, as I said. And one more for Miss Santos. How much does the camp for Valentina have to completely just entail being a camp specifically tailored for this one matchup? Mais uma pergunta para você, Tyler. É, quanto do camp que você fez agora teve que ser dedicado especificamente para ser um camp contra a Valentina e não só um camp para você se preparar para uma luta? O que foi específico desse camp que foi focado a Valentina como oponente? Então, é, eu sempre treinei né, focada na campeã e nessa luta que é a mais importante, né? É, todo treino meu sempre indo com a cabeça focada no dia que eu ia chegar nessa luta. Então, agora aconteceu e a gente já vem, desde que eu soube que ia acontecer a luta do cinturão, a gente já está treinando é, focado para essa luta e ajustando os pontos necessários que precisam ser ajustados, né? É, a gente vem desde que eu fiquei sabendo a luta, ajustando cada ponto, focado na estratégia, né? Voltar em cima da Valentina. Então, a gente vem ajustando os pontos, é, focado na luta e em cima da estratégia que, em cima da estratégia que a gente fez para ela. Um, so, I've always trained thinking about the champion. I've always trained preparing myself for this fight. I've always prepared for this moment. So, my camps have always been looking to, for that moment to arrive. Now that this moment has arrived, uh, what we had to do is to adjust the strategy, adjust specific points, go for specific strategies to win this fight because now the moment has arrived. So this camp was focused more on strategy and to fine tune everything that has been done in the past for this uh, to fight for this belt as I always waited. Thank you. Okay, great. Let's try again with Jay Anderson from Cage Side Press. Thanks very much. Can you hear me now? Yes. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. Uh, first of all, for, for Valentina, I mean, at this point in your career, you talk about, you know, not looking past your opponents, but I'm curious what your what your goals are and what motivates you on a, a larger scale. Is it title defenses? Is it setting records? Do you have other goals that you want to uh, accomplish in your time in the sport? Everything, everything that you mentioned right now, it's in my head, but still not looking to pass my next challenge, not still looking like um, the key, not under, underestimate your opponent. And this is um, like what I do, martial arts for me, it's everything. Keep active, stay in like good shape, good health, uh, defend my title. title and uh, like, um, whatever. I don't know what the end of the year gonna bring, like maybe um, to fight in the uh, different weight classes for to go for the uh, um, double champ status. I don't know. This is everything that uh, we are speaking about me, my team, my uh, management team. And uh, yeah, just waiting for the right moment and the uh, like the best moment to make it happen. You mentioned the double champ status there. And uh, if Juliana were to beat Amanda Nunez in that rematch, do you think it more likely that the UFC would want to patch you up because we match you up? Sorry, because we did see you with Amanda twice already. Do you think there's a better chance if Juliana wins? Um, I think why not? Because a um, um, few years ago, we fought with Juliana. I submitted her with Amber in the second round. And I think it's going to be an excited fight for everything as well. Or she would like uh, go down and try to challenge and fly away it, whatever. Um, but, you know, I tell that um, if Amanda uh, will be in the same shape, same shape what she fought Juliana that time, definitely Ju Juliana has all chances to win her but if amanda gonna be in the fight shape when she fight me mm, i think she um will um like get get back her belt and we are gonna still come back for this uh third fight uh 
thing happening. So it's either way. I don't care really. Yeah, I can fight both of them at the same time, like whatever. Thanks, Champ. And for Talia, just a, a quick one from me. I mean, when you see something like Pena upsetting Amanda Nunez, does that give you confidence knowing that anything can happen on any given night? Fala para você agora, quando você vê a Juliana Pena ganhando do Amanda Nunes, isso te dá uma esperança de que existe uma chance, uma esperança maior, uma esperança adicional, de que isso que é possível e que isso pode acontecer? Pode repetir o começo, comecinho? Quando você vê a uma Juliana Pena ganhando da Amanda Nunes, isso te dá uma confiança de que tudo pode acontecer e que alguém que entra no torno para ganhar da campeã pode ganhar da campeã com uma luta daquelas? Sim, com certeza, eu acredito. É, vendo né, a, aquela derrota lá da Amanda né, é, contra a Pena, é, vejo que isso é bem possível e... Os dois atletas têm 100% de chance. É assim que eles sobem lá em cima. Os dois têm 100% de chance. Enquanto não acabar a luta, os dois têm 100%, né? Então, é igual ao videogame. Os dois entram com a barrinha cheia. E vai acabando a vida. Então, eu creio e que isso é possível, sim. E o vai quem pensei que quem está melhor ali focado no seu treinamento, focado com o seu espiritual, focado com o físico, quem tiver mais preparado também, com certeza. Of course, I surely do, because I think that when athletes step into the octagon, they have a hundred, both, both actually have a hundred percent chance. Um, when you see a fight just like uh, uh, Amanda's defeat to Juliana, uh, basically ev everyone comes into the octagon with a hundred percent, just like a video game. When you come in to a fight in a video game, there's two bars there, a hundred percent stamina on both sides. And, you know, it takes a little bit of life. But the fact of the matter is the one that's more spiritually ready, the one that's more physically ready, the one that's more focused, the one that's more driven is going to win. So athletes come in with a 100% chance on each side. And the one that's more focused and the one that's more prepared for the fight is going to come out winning. This is exactly the point. This is exactly, but not forget, it's kind of like mental game. It's mental game for all fighters. And we know exactly that Amanda doesn't have this mental game very strong. In her previous fight, we could see that. And we could see that everyone can break her, their mental game. But, you know, I have very strong mental game. Okay, thanks very much. Okay, and our last set of questions for these ladies are coming from Adriano Albuquerque from Globo. Hello, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to ask this question to Tyler. I'm going to ask it in Portuguese. Tyler, é um prazer estar falando contigo. É, todo mundo fala que a Valentina é imbatível, é a melhor do mundo, isso e aquilo outro. Como que você faz para não ser afetada por esse falatório e se manter centrada sem perder a fé? Uh, Tyler, this is everyone in, uh, everyone pretty much says, I mean, Valentina is the champion. She's the best fighter in the world. She's the toughest. And it's all that talk. So what do you do to keep yourself focused, centered, and just basically not pay attention to all the noise and to continue powering on? Então, é um prazer. E, primeiramente, eu não me sinto afetada com esses comentários, né? É, eu sempre tive, sempre desde quando eu comecei, tive que, é, o que o que vence é o trabalho duro, né? Então eu sou focada no que eu faço, focada no meu trabalho, é, sempre buscando elevar a minha mente, o meu espiritual. Então esses comentários não me afetam, eu sou uma menina também tranquila, calma, é, eu sempre focada no meu, no meu objetivo. Os comentários de fora não me afetam, eu me fecho para isso, então eu não tenho nenhum problema com isso. Uh, oh, as a pleasure to, to, be, to be talking to you. Um, the uh, Basically, I, th those things don't affect me. I don't let the noise come in because I've always been of the philosophy that hard work and the journey actually is what's going to get you there. And so I've always been a quiet girl, uh, uh, Jerry, on, on my um, on my own mind, and I don't let those things that outside noise get. All I need to do is basically take my spirit and my mind higher, 
and that allows me to not let things in like that. So you know, the outside noise doesn't really affect me. E Tyler, por esse domínio da Valentina no peso mosca, pouca gente vai acreditar que você possa ser essa pessoa que vai vencê-la. Eu queria que você dissesse por que as pessoas deveriam acreditar que sim, a Tyler vai ser a pessoa que vai destronar a Valentina. Uh, and Tyler, with all this domination of Valentina and flyweight, I mean, this a lot of people are gonna say, well, you, you are gonna not. But a lot of people are not going to think that you're the one they're going. It's going to dethrone her. I like you to tell people why is it you that is going to be the one that is going to dethrone Valentina and you know make 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 everyone believe. Primeiramente, é, eu eu sou assim, eu penso assim, eu não preciso que ninguém acredite em mim, porque a primeira pessoa a acreditar e que precisa acreditar sou eu, né? Então, se eu acredito que eu vou destronar ela, eu acredito nesse meu potencial, é isso que importa. Mas, é, também, né, para as pessoas que não acreditam acreditarem, eu, eu acredito que chegou a minha hora, né? É, chegou o meu momento, é, muitos anos de trabalho de foco, de dedicação, e se essa oportunidade, essa chance chegou para mim, é porque é o meu momento, e se eu fui chamada para estar lá, é porque eu tenho chances. Um, first of all, uh, the only person, I don't need people to actually believe in me, because the only person that needs to believe that I can throw in about, you know, it's myself. I'm the one that needs to believe in If I believe in myself, it's going to happen regardless of what people think. Well, second, for those people who don't believe in me, For them to believe, um, just think of the hard work. It's my turn. That's what I think is my time to have this chance. It is my moment. Um, I believe in all the hard work. I believe in all the journey I've had, and I believe that this is a time that I, it's, it, I'm due for this. And I do believe that uh, when my time has come, um, you, you should be start believing that that I could be the one. Muito obrigado, Tyler. Thank you, guys. Obrigada. Okay, thank you so much to Tyla and Valentina for their time. Again, they're going to be competing for that flyweight world title at UFC 275. We appreciate you answering those questions for media today. Thank you so much and good luck to both of you. Um, next up, we have the highly anticipated rematch between Zhang Weili and Joanna Yan Jacek. Joanna holds the record for the longest reigning champion in the women's strawweight division and is now tied for the most title fights in the UFC's women's divisions with Amanda Nunes. So Zhang Weili, she became China's first UFC champion in 2019 with a stunning first round finish of Jessica Andrade. And in 2020, Weili defended her title against Joanna in what went down in history as one of the greatest fights the UFC has ever seen. This rematch is sure to be nothing short of incredible. So I believe we will begin taking questions for Whaley and Joanna in just a second. Um, and I think Mike Bond from MMA Junkie has us uh, geared up to go. He's first once again. Mike, can you hear us? Yeah, I can. Great. Um, I guess just first of all, for both of you, um, finally getting this rematch, what's kind of your thoughts on it? And I guess what do you want to be different this time around in terms of how the fight plays out? I guess we can start with Jang since I see her there first. Uh, Last fight, it was a very good fight, uh, one of the greatest uh, female UFC fight in the history. So I think the second fight will be a really good one too. I think we we improve a lot during the during this duration. So I think it's gonna be the, one of the best fight. And the same for Joanna. What was the question? You're finally getting this rematch, Joanna. Obviously, the first fight wasn't epic. Just give me your thoughts on running it back and what do you need to do different this time around to make it a different fight? Uh, I need to be the smart and I'm very happy for the comeback. I'm very happy to uh, get my second fight with Weili Zhang uh, and go for the for the belt right after. So, uh, uh, you know, last fight was very close and uh, the decision could go either way. 
uh, I felt like uh, I did enough in the first fight. She was the champion uh, that time, so sometimes you have to do more to, to beat the champion. But I feel like I gave uh, all I had uh, in Vegas in March 2020. So we working on some, some things, we sharpening my tools. I just need to stay calm, smarter, uh, bring all my tools uh, to the octagon June 11 in Singapore. That's it. And I will win. I will get this victory and go, uh, go for the belt right after. And the expectations are going to be so high for this rematch, Joanna, just based on what happened the first time around. Um, do you want to go through a similar fight like that? Or do you think the fact that, you know, it's different stakes, three rounds, it kind of is going to change the outlook of the fight completely? Uh, you, you know, I'm very gifted, uh, gifted athlete, and for me, it doesn't matter if we go three, five, or ten runs. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, I'm always putting on hell of a performance uh, every single day uh, at the American top team. So I'm always ready for everything and anything. Wei Zhang is uh, such a great athlete. Uh, she's the former champion. She's one of the greatest. Very tough physically, mentally. Uh, she has so many uh, weapons, but uh, I, I'm the goat of this division, you know. Maybe I'm not the champ right now, and I lost the belt a few years ago, but uh, I know my legacy, and I know where the mistakes uh, were made, and I'm ready to be back right to the top uh, very soon this year. And Dana White saying on Saturday night after Carlos Esparza defeated Rose Namajunas that this was likely going to be a number one contender fight now in the winter fights for the belt. Um, how does that change your motivation going into this fight? And I guess also if you could just give me some thoughts on how that fight played out between Rose and Carla. Was it a question to me? Yeah, for you first and then the same oh, to Zhang after. I think it's, I think it's a, like before... I accept the fight with Wei Li Zhang. Uh, I knew that I was going to fight for the belt. And after the first fight with Wei Li Zhang, I knew that I was going to be the next one in line. Sometimes it takes time. There are uh, another girls uh, who has to fight for the belt as well. But I just wanted to be back. Mm, and here we go. We have a big fight. It's a, you know, fighting Wei Li Zhang for the second time is a big motivation for me because I can be better every single day. I can get back to the gym every single day for every training session. I train from uh, two to three, even four times a day. Uh, I'm so focused and motivated and, and I'm just getting better. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel and I know that it's the right time. Uh, and I'm in the right place to to be back right to the top to to having this belt, and um, uh, I don't know, I don't know, like you know, this is a tough business, you know, and I feel so sorry for Rose, and she doesn't have to be sorry, and it's a tough business. It it looks easy, and that's the craziest about this sport. It's it's the beauty of this sport that we perform, we train. Uh, we do the weight cuts, uh, we don't see our families, friends uh, for a long time. And sometimes when you step into the octagon, it's not your night. And and I, 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 I took a big uh, losses in my fighting career, but uh, it doesn't define you, you know. Uh, you have to keep your head up, uh, change some things and get get back right to the top you know it's taking a while but uh, I'm super motivated disciplined and ready uh, ready for uh, my upcoming fight with Wei Li Zhang okay I think we'll go on to the next set of questions they're from Damon Martin with MMA fighting hey Joanna uh just to kind of follow up on that, uh, I know you had a different opinion of what you thought was going to happen in the Rose Nami Yunus Carlos yeah. Barza fight. Were you surprised the fight played out that way? Oh man, I was very surprised because sometimes you have to do more. You have to do much more to beat the champion. But um, you know, I can speak for myself. I, I I can't speak for Rose. I don't know what happened. You know, but when you feel that when you feel that the first round wasn't good and the second you have to do something and sometimes you have to risk to get the victory uh, even paying a big price 
But I don't know what happened, you know. I uh, till the end of the fight, I thought that Rose, uh, Rose got it, but, but no. And here we go. Like Carla, I really thought she was going to look better, and I was like, oh, this girl deserved the title shot. She had so many win streak. She has, uh, but she, for me, she looked the same as seven years ago when we fought for the belt in Dallas. And uh, history likes to make a circle and. Soon, soon to be the champ. You, uh, you already knew that, you know, a win here would probably get you a title shot, but now we yeah. you know, kind of know that also because you have a, a dominant win over Carlos Sparza, so it kind of helps, you know, build the anticipation for that. Does that change your perspective on the rematch with Whaley in terms of the pressure, in terms of the expectations you have for yourself, just knowing, you know, what is next? Of course, I know the price and I know who I am, how big my legacy is. Uh, you know, like I, I have, I have received so many messages from Polish people, like people from all over the world. After after the the fighting weekend, and they are like, some of them they were like, oh, I'm so sorry, I was hating on you, uh, because you took a few losses, but you the real goat. I didn't know you you were holding the belt for such a long time, and that's the thing. You know, people are like, you are not the queen anymore. Yes, I'm the queen of the strawy division. I put on, on hell of a work and lots of effort uh, into building this division you know it's the lightest division in the ufc but people love watching the straw weights and we always put on 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 great uh, fights me with jean cross uh, and other girls uh, as well and uh, but i feel we spoke just a few days ago you know and after this weekend i feel even more motivated i'm tired Tired because I have been training so hard for my fight with Wei Zhang since uh, January. I got back to Amer I got back to American Top Team in the middle of January, and I've been training from 11 till 13 times a week uh, in last four months. And man, I'm tired. But after this weekend, so before that, uh, be before week before the weekend, I was like, no, I need to make some adjustments in my training schedule. But man, after what I have seeing uh, the UFC 274 I'm more motivated and I I just want to do more uh, to win to clearly win at uh, the UFC 275 with Wei Li Zhang but it's not going to be easy but uh, to get this victory and go for the belt you know and bring um, light on this division again you know because since I lost the belt in 2017 to Rose Namayunas via knockout I had very uh, close second fight with her, uh, very good fight with Michelle Waterson, Tisha Torres, uh, very close fight with Wei Li Zhang. And you know, I always bring this extra light, extra attention, extra energy into the octagon, into the strawweight division. You know, there is so many upcoming prospects uh, you have been talking about. Uh, we can see, but when they get to the top, top three, me, Rose, Wei Li, there is no more prospects, you know. That's why we there is so many like rematches in this division because uh, me, Wei Li, Rose, we all can be the champions again. Thank you, Joanna. All right, up next, Nick Atkin from SCMP. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Cool. Uh, this one is for uh, Wei Li. There's been a lot of talk about uh, maybe making this fight five rounds. I, I know Joanna would like to have five rounds. Uh, would, would you prefer if this fight was five rounds, or are you happy with the three round? No, she turned up. She turned up. They're down the fight a month ago, so she doesn't want to fight. She doesn't want to go five rounds. All right, uh, Whaley, what do you say to that? <laughs> So, uh, personally, I think there's no big difference between three rounds or five rounds. So, because we are not the main event and we are not the title event. So, I think the three rounds or five rounds is really a uh, similar game. And only the difference is going to be on the, the strategy part. 
Clever and answer. we heard, sorry, go ahead. Smart answer. Okay. Uh, we, we heard from Yuana as well about the um, Namiunas Esparza fight. I just wanted to get Whaley's thoughts as well. Uh, was Whaley surprised uh, at the outcome? And uh, does, does this now maybe open uh, the path to uh, another title shot for Whaley, given uh, the two losses to Namiunas? Maybe this, if she beats Joanna, this might be easier for her to get another title shot. 我觉得这是我跟Joanna的机会 think for me and Joanna, for both of us, that's a good opportunity. Uh, for Rose's performance, I think she is too pressured during the fight, but uh, the result is good for me and Joanna. I think we have a chance to challenge the title again. And Whaley, you've taken your training camp to Phuket in Thailand with Bang Tao, Muay Thai and MMA. Uh, what's it been like working with Josh Hinger and, and uh, George Hickman, Frank Hickman? Uh, it's really good. I studied a lot. The coaches teach me a lot uh, different kind of takedowns. I got a lot of new knowledge. And sorry if I have time, finally, just uh, I know um, it's, it's uh, some, some tough times back home in China. People going through some tough times with COVID. There's some lockdowns. Uh, do you have a message for the people of China and are you hoping to inspire them with, with a victory here? Uh, I think if we make the effort, not uh, even in the event, in the fight or in, about the COVID situation, we will beat them. So let's go. Well, thank you very much. I guess we're going to wrap up there. Ladies, we appreciate it so much. We cannot wait for the rematch of that incredible fight. One of the greatest things that ever happened inside the Octagon. Thank you very much for your time. We will see you in Singapore for UFC 275. Thank you. Okay, let's see if we can uh, now bring in UFC light heavyweight champ Glover Teixeira and the title contender Yuri Pohaska. Um, I mean, he had the most incredible win at UFC 267 in Abu Dhabi. And that is when Glover Teixeira claimed the belt and became a world champion. He takes on the Czech Republic's Prohashka, who entered the UFC in 2020 and put the division on notice with back-to-back -back knockouts. And with those performances, he earned himself a shot at the UFC title. We will now begin, I believe, taking questions for Glover and Yuri. Um, and if history has taught us anything on this call. I believe we're going to start with Mike Vaughn. We'll see if he's on there. Hey, Glover, just uh, curious. I mean, first title defense, how do things change? You were pursuing that belt for so long, but now you're the guy who has to defend it. How does that change your mindset going into a fight like this? Man, the same way, you know, same train, same mindset, you know, just got to be focused, get there, and do what I, what I have to do. And what do you make of Yuri as an opponent? Obviously, he's got a very unique fighting style. Uh, how do you prepare differently for that? Uh, there's no preparation different. We just got to watch uh, his style a little bit, but uh, we, we're not at the point yet. I'm just focused in my conditioning, what I have to do, you know, focus on my style. And uh, in the last preparation of the camp, that's when I uh, start looking at the videos a little bit and start... Um, you know, make an adjustment here and there, but pretty much like just focus on my style, you know. And how do you feel about going to Singapore to do this fight? Obviously, there's going to be a big time change and things like that. Um, what do you do in order to get your body and your mind ready for something like that? I'm excited, man. I'm excited to to be in Singapore. You know, I heard it's beautiful there. I've never been there, and uh, I'm just excited to be there and fight and uh, defend the belt. Uh, you know, man, uh, excited and happy about it. Robert Rampa is available. Robert? Hello, thank you very much, Glover. Uh, the fight is placed in Singapore. We know it. Uh, Yuri was used to fight in uh, Asia for years. Uh, do you think there is a slight advantage for him for that reason? 
Could be, you know, uh, you know, every experience uh, is experience, you know, he fought there before, but, uh, you know, I fought out, out of the country, uh, uh, that doesn't, never bothered me too much, you know, uh, what bothered me before was, uh, was different things, right now I'm like in a position that, I man, I'm just excited about uh, being another place and training and fight and excited about everything, you know. Okay, uh, I have a second second question. Uh, Yuri spent some time uh, with Hendrik Sehudo. Uh, how seriously uh, do you take this uh, fact? Well, you know, Henry is a, he's a great wrestler, you know, probably like uh, he needs some of that, you know what I mean? Uh, he's gonna fight, uh, he's gonna fight me, I mean, you know, know my style, I'm going, for, I'm going after for takedowns, for uh, Uh, for everything so you know just uh <clears throat> hopefully he learned some good stuff from uh you know Cejudo. thank you very much let's go to uh adriana albuquerque from globo i believe he has some questions yes hi i'm back uh glover uh i'm gonna ask in portuguese glovon eh, já são alguns meses como campeão Mudou alguma coisa na sua vida? Qual é a diferença entre a sua vida como um lutador comum e a sua vida como um campeão do UFC? E você, Glover, mudou alguma coisa nesse tempo? Você não viu meu 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 stories outro dia não, cara? Aí eu tava na fila no no Target, aí eu falei assim: "Porra, não mudou nada, sou campeão do mundo, eu não tenho que ficar na fila do mesmo jeito". <risos> não, cara, é Realmente é só as pessoas mesmo me chamando de campeão, um, um accomplish, né? uma oportunidade que tive aí de, de ganhar o cinturão e estar tá como o melhor do mundo no momento. É, é sensacional que eu tive, mas é, a vida continua do mesmo jeito, cara. Eu sou um cara centrado, sou um cara focado no que eu sou, eu sou sempre o que eu sou e sempre acredito que vou ser assim, você entendeu? Não tenho que mudar o meu jeito ou o jeito de viver nem nada a minha a minha felicidade que eu era antes de ser campeão continuo sendo assim e é só mesmo uma oportunidade né de uma, como como eu disse antes né foi a cereja no bolo né certo é, eles estão me pedindo para perguntar em português e em inglês Glover não sei se você também vai ter que responder em português e inglês mas é, é, I'm gonna ask in Portuguese and in English não é, muita gente acha Glover que o Prochaska é o futuro da divisão e que esse futuro começa agora eu quero perguntar para você por que que essas pessoas estão enganadas so uh, a lot of people uh, seem to think that Prohaska is the future of this division and that this future starts now. Why are these people wrong? Well, some people are definitely going to ruin for him and uh, it's going to thank uh, the guys is young, the guys, they want to, they want, he got the look, they wanted to do that, but he's going to have to pass uh, through me and I'm very prepared for, to defend my belt and, uh, man, you know, The fight is just like uh, what I prepare and uh, what I do. I'm just happy to be here and happy to defend this belt uh, against Prohaska. And I uh, just want to go over there. And uh, if it, that's what it is, if it does, he's going to be the champion. Uh, and then he's going to have to beat the champion. My last question to Glover. Uh, Glover, do you, do you still think, I, I know you're not looking past Prohaska by any means, But do you still think about a rematch against Jones Jones in the future? You know, man, his, his uh, situation right now is like defending this belt again in June 11. And uh, of course, I'm always focused in my next fight. I'm always say there. I never, I never jump an opponent. I never pay. I look at two opponent and think, oh, this fight is gonna happen. That never happened to me yeah, before. It's not gonna happen now. My next fight is my focus. And uh, but down the line, who knows? You know, John Jones, a champion heavyweight. I'm still champion light heavyweight. And if that fight happens, you know, there'll be a possibility. There's a great fight. You know, it's a great rematch. Obrigado, Glover. Depois a gente se fala aí. Vou estar lá em Singapura para te ver lutar. Thank you, guys.
Valeu, valeu, Fer. Okay, next, I believe it's Nicholas Adkin from the South China Morning Post. Hey, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Cool. Um, yeah, this one is for Yuri. Uh, are, are you going to be heading to Phuket, Thailand, for your some of your camp? I, I heard you might be coming this way. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, so what, what's attracted you to, is it Bang Tao you're going to be at? Uh, are you coming to work with the Hickmans? Um, yeah, what was your reasoning behind that? Uh, the reason is simple, because uh, I want to be ready in their, uh, in their uh, timeline to be ready in their weather. So that's the reason, not, nothing else. And uh, there's some world-class coaches there, obviously. Uh, that must be another bonus for you. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the reason. All right, and um, that's it for me. Sorry, thank you very much. No problem. Thank you so much. Up next, Damon Martin from MMA Fighting. Hey guys, uh, first question for Yuri. Uh, Yuri, we know your style is so exciting, explosive, unpredictable, but you know, there always comes a, a certain level of danger with that as well, taking those chances. Uh, do you feel like you want to keep your same style against Glover no matter what? Do you want to stay that same exciting, explosive fighter, not 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 allow him to predict anything you're going to do in there? Uh, no. Because I think uh, my last style in my last fight uh, was changed. Because I had I have to change this style. Because uh, especially uh, in the ground game, especially in the wrestling, uh, that's why I drilled that uh, with the Henry, and then back in che in Czech Republic with my my coaches. Uh, everybody knows. Everybody knows my my uh my strong weapon and uh my weak my weakest weakness so that's why i start to drill that that's why i start to preparing the the dangerous technique in 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 that and i believe in myself in that much much more than than ever so i'm glad glad for that to 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 have an opponent like a Glover because uh, he's gave me the opportunity to to, uh, to to prepare myself in these in these styles to be better and better. So, yeah. How how much confidence do you have in yourself now? You know, if this fight hits the ground, that you can not only survive but you know win on the ground against a you know a legend like Glover who is incredible on the ground. Uh, with all respect, with all respect, I have to, I have to be uh, dominant in the in the in the, on the ground. Not like uh, not like other opponents who's just uh, taking the Glover's uh, Glover's game. Like uh, they just started defending. My game is not defending. My game is all the time attacking. All the time, the taking the to be the dominant in dominant positions, from from the back, from from the from the from the up guard, doesn't matter. And for Glover, uh, you know, Glover, you've you fought everybody, the who's who throughout your entire career in the UFC. Uh, we mentioned John Jones, but you know, going on down the list, all the guys you fought. Where do you put Yeri in terms of the dangers that he represents in this fight? Like, where would you rank him in terms of the guys you fought in the UFC? You know, man, Yeri is uh, is the 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 new generation. You know, it's like he bring a, a different style. Like you say, uh, uh, the the improvement of uh, these guys that coming out right now. You just make uh, make you better. The competition make you better. You know, um, and uh, he's the guy that risk. You know, he's the guy that take a risk. I'm the guy that take a risk. We put excited fights. You know, uh, um, it's very sad to be honest to see a guys like uh, the way we talk, and uh, we don't sell as much because uh, it's very uh, martial art, very very respectful. But like the way we fight is uh, we put everything in the line. We you know you see the way the guys fight. You see the way I fight. I have the most finished uh, fights in UFC uh, history in the light heavyweight. 
you know, and I put it up there. I, I go in, you know, losing or winning. I'm over there bleeding. I'm over there fighting. And uh, that's the style that he's bringing. And, uh, you know, man, it's kind of like uh, people always say it's nothing really bothers me because I'm just happy to where I am, what I'm doing right now. But those kind of things, it's like it's upsetting a little bit because those kind of fighters, those are the ones who should be more appreciated other than be here and and be make a chaos and the cameras and and do all that and when it comes to a fight we be like throwing a jab from the distance you know what I mean yeah does it bother you as a guy who's been around and, and earned the respect of you know everybody from the fighters to media people like me that that's kind of where the sport's gone, where it's, uh, you know, so much about the talk, so much about, you know, trash talk and, and kind of building the fight that way and not as much about what's actually happening in the cage. Yeah. Well, I don't mind the, the trash talk, to be honest, as a fan and, and, and a little bit, I, I look at those guys trash talking, but they got to back it up, man. Those guys are forgetting about it, uh, the, the, the fight game. And that's why... Uh, uh, guys like me, guys like uh, uh, Michael Challen, is still coming back and is still uh, kicking ass, man, for for years there in UFC because uh, those guys, uh, they, 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 they worry about it too much, what they're going to say, what they're going to dress up, what they're going to show up in a, in a fight or whatever, the press conference, and forget about the training a little bit, you know. Thank you, lover. Thank you, Yuri. Okay, next we have um, Keith from SureDog, Keith, are you there? And would you like to ask a question? I noticed that you have the belt over your shoulder. And I think about, you know, you had such a long career without the belt. If you retired without ever achieving that title, would you have been satisfied with your career? <laughs> yeah, man, I, I, you know, I don't think that I, I, you know, that didn't happen, you know? So it's like, uh, I just wanted to, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question. It's like something that didn't happen. What I'll be satisfied is, uh, for sure, because, uh, you know, I was happy and uh, I'm a happy man with the, my career. Probably I'm missing something, but uh, that's why I keep I keep going, man. I, I, you know, so it's <laughs> a weird question, to be honest. You know, it's like I never thought about it. You know what I mean? And, and over to Yuri. Hopefully this question won't be as weird. Uh, you, you come from a background fighting in the Asian market. Now you're fighting in Asia for the title. Do you think that carries a little bit of advantage to kind of used to the travel and everything? <laughs> for me, it doesn't matter where, where, I'm, where I'm fighting. If it's in Rio de Janeiro or in America in, or in Japan, it doesn't matter for me. Because... Uh, for me, it's important to fight, to, to fight and the victory. Uh, Jay Anderson from Cage Side Press. Hey, thanks very much. And uh, hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Glover, I wanted to ask the kind of run that Yuri is on right now. You know, I don't believe he's lost a, a fight since 2015. He's got all these finishes. It's very reminiscent of your own rise up to the first title fight with John Jones. And I'm wondering if that gives you any sort of an advantage because you can kind of put yourself in his shoes and understand the confidence that he's going to have coming in. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Just uh, like I say, I love the challenge. Uh, I think uh, everybody saying, keep saying like uh, Jerry is, is ready for uh is the next guy because he only have two fights in FC, but I see, I see the guy that he beat the way he beat them and, uh, and the fight and me as a uh, right away, man, I could, I uh, could sit back and, uh, and say, he's got to fight again and, and make all the politics and stuff. Try to do that right away. I wanted to fight him because uh, I thought he fought well. I thought he was, uh, he was the next guy. And like I say, I like to, uh, I like to challenge myself, man. I like to see with my game. It's almost like the blood sport uh, from, you know, John Close Van Damme. You see the, the, the style against style, but now we have one style that's MMA because everybody pretty much know every style, but then we, which one, the, the, 
they get better with, you know, which style they're gonna is gonna do better, how this guy's gonna you know uh training for the my kind of style, you know, they go in there and grind him and bring him to deep water and take him down and, and strike him, you know, and him is the same way. So I'm just uh excited for that. All right, and Yuri, you turned pro in 2012. That was the, the same year that Glover actually joined the UFC. I'm wondering, was he someone that you were watching back then? And did you ever envision fighting him someday? Man, uh, I visualized that that I will be the champ, that, but never, never to fight the Glover. And he's here, and I'm happy for that. All right, well, looking forward to this one. Thanks very much to both of you. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. That does conclude the UFC 275 virtual press conference in partnership with the Singapore Tourism Board. We want to thank everybody for being here today and, of course, your supporting coverage. And a big thank you to Tyla, Valentina, Joanna, Whaley, Glover, and Yuri. We appreciate all of you spending your time with us and answering these questions. We will distribute the video and audio downloads from today's event to your emails as soon as they are available. Have a great day, everyone. We hope to see you in Singapore for UFC 275. Thank you all so much.